Hi guys, what's up? So I am making dinner and tonight's dinner is the sheet pan of nachos that I'm going to be making. So I have my sheet pan here. I have put tea chips and now these I just fried fresh out of oil. I'm going to show you how I did it. So first thing that I do is I take tortilla. These are small fajita flour tortilla. Take them, I cut them into fours like that and like that. You know, fours. Boop, 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 four. And then after I cut them into fours, I take the knife, or sometimes it's a fork, and I put holes. As you can see, they're like little holes and slits in them. And I do that so when they fry, if you don't put holes and stuff, they tend to bubble up and get like air pockets and stuff and you don't want that and what I do is I fry them in the oil so my oil is over here I take it I drop them in the oil now I don't use my fryer basket and I'll tell you why because they float up and the bottom will get cooked and then you'll have to flip them and do the other side I put them in that oil without the basket and then I take this basket and I put it on top of it to wait the tortilla chips down this way they cook on both sides in the oil like they're in the oil with the basket holding it down you could also do it on the frying pan on the stove just weigh it down with something if you can or you could also just flip them but since I have a deep fryer it makes it much easier to fry and match it or to make it easier you can just use a bag of your favorite tortilla chips which also works much better but homemade makes it so much better so I have my homemade tortillas, so I'm going to spread on there. And here I have, I chopped up some onion, I put um, peppers, I sauteed that with um, some corn. Now I had a bag of frozen corn that was open, so I just used that instead of opening a can. And then I also put, open a can of black beans that I drained and rinsed and mixed it in there and I cook. And then for the nacho um, meat, I'm using, um, chicken since I have plenty of chicken I'll use that but I also do it with beef if you can and when you do it with beef you can do ground beef which I did have but I was like I don't want ground beef I want some actual meat pieces in there like shredded meat which a steak would be better to use but ground beef works too it's good or you can do it with pork which I love doing it with pork but I didn't have pork this time so I'm doing it chicken and then you also need some Mexican Blend cheese. Well, actually, it's called Fiesta Blend Cheese. This is what Walmart's Great Value brand is good. Fiesta Blend Cheese. This is shredded Monterey Jack cheddar, queso, quesadilla, and um, what's this one called? Asiago cheese. I think no. Azero cheese, whatever it's called. Yeah, that's what's in there. But you can really do whatever you type of cheese you want. Well, I'm gonna sell this. And you can also do this like vegetarian, vegan, if you want to do a keto version. But like vegan, just instead of doing like chicken, beef, pork, whatever, you can do like um, probably be good with tofu or like any other beyond meat substitute, any type of meat substitute would work great. But I'm doing it with chicken. I'm a meat lover. And you would also like substitute the cheese. So instead of using normal cheese, you would do like vegan cheese, anything that's not made with dairy. So I'm gonna put all my nacho chips here. Oh wow. Okay, so I don't have enough tortilla chips, so I'm gonna pause and mix some more tortilla chips. My oil is still hot and I still have more in here. And I also have backup. Always when you want to make recipes and you know you really like something, have backup ingredients. Like, I make nachos all the time, so I make sure I have a second bag of nachos. And they come 20 pack, which is good. And this is a store brand because they're cheaper. I usually try to go for the store brand on something because it's a lot cheaper than buying the name brand. So yeah, I'm going to make some more tortilla chips, more tortilla chips and I'll be right back. Alright, I'm back. So I have more chips on here. I have enough now. And by the way, if you do decide to use vegan cheese, just know that it may not melt because 
there's no, it's not really real cheese, so it's not gonna melt like it is or the alternative to cheese. Now, did I have my tortillas or I'm gonna add chicken? I'll put on a glove to add chicken. Cause if I don't wear a glove, people are gonna be like, you use your hands. Well, that on the floor, we won't use that one. So let me put this on and spread chicken all over that. Those tortilla chips and they taste amazing. I'm gonna get it everywhere. Uh, shredded chicken, some of it may be a little bit more chunkier. But it's alright. You want pieces of chunk chicken when you eat. You can also put it in the food processor, but watch it when you do. You want to pulse it in the food processor. Don't just turn it on and let it run because it'll just shredded, it become really shredded, almost like crummy, Not really, I don't know what you would call it, crummy or like, um, almost like ground it basically, after it's cooked, and you know, I mean it will work out fine, but, yeah, so I'm just adding chicken, making sure I get it everywhere, and I just did two big pieces of chicken breast. When you do, um, for the steak, I think one steak would be enough if you buy a big one. One big, like, T-bone would probably do it. Or if you do, like, pork, I get, like, with my pork, depends what store I go to. Like, one time I got, like, the trimming that they cut off the pork. It's, like, fatty and also has some of the fresh, delicious pork. And I cook that and then shred that. Or I get, like, the pieces of, um, the pork steak slices cook that and boom you got it. Now I'm going to add this deliciousness on top. And I also normally would put some mushrooms in here but I didn't have any. And we were just in Walmart yesterday. I'm just going to add this which I said before with peppers, onion, corn, and black beans. And with the beans you can do whatever you want and also for the corn you can do Fresh corn on the cob, which I have. I have in the summertime grilled the corn and used it. Like cut, cut the kernels off the cob, which you can do. You can even do it on the stove. I've done it on the stove once for another recipe. I, what I did was I put it on the grill pan on the stove and I cook it, but I cover it with you know, a bowl like this, but a big one, like a to dome it, like if it was on the grill, because you close the grill, you know how the grill has to cover it and you close it with the grill, like that, and it worked out totally fine. Now, let me just do this, kind of dry this off so I can add cheese. Like I said, I'm using Fiesta blend, which is Mexican blend. You can even do the taco blend which has a few cheese in it and has like the taco seasoning. This is two pounds of cheese, eight cups. You're not, I'm not gonna use the whole thing of cheese. Ooh, snap, this nachos is coming together. Make sure you get it everywhere. This is eight cups of cheese in this bag. And sometimes I'm thinking this is really eight cups because it's really packed in here. Because sometimes you buy things in the store and you're like, is that really how much is in here? It looks so little, you know? I said not a lot of cheese. You can put that much you want, but I like it cheesy and so does my sister. We're having lots of cheese. Cheese, make it rain. Cheese. Okay. I think I'd say that's about it. Oh, there's a recipe on the back for Mexican style ravioli. If you want to make that, there's that recipe. I didn't know it was really cheap. I guess they can't put recipe on that. So now, that's all ready to go into a preheated convection 375. And you just gotta watch it. If you have conventional, probably about 10 minutes, I think convection would be like 5. Just till the cheese melts and it gets brown. Now I'll be back when that is all done. Let's drop it in the oven. Uh, I'm using the top of my oven because my oven is a double oven. I, there it goes. 
sometimes it doesn't want to open. Just do this. And I may have to flip it, like turn it around because the heat comes from the back and sometimes it doesn't reach the front and the back will get burned quicker than the front. And I just put it right on my sheet pan. I didn't use no aluminum foil or parchment, but you definitely can use parchment and aluminum foil if your pan is not a really good non-stick, you know, good one. Mine is the William Sonoma one that they make that's really good, so I don't need to do that. Because it cleans really easy, but if you have like a cheap pan that's like the cheap will burn, it'll get stuck and get rusty and gross, and I would suggest use like something down. But since my pan is good, I don't need to. So I'll be back when the nachos come out of that oven. Ooh, it smells so good already. Peace. Okay, so what I forgot to mention is I cook it for like five minutes so the cheese melts it. And then I turn the broiler on so it can get a little brown on top. I mean, if you leave it in the oven long enough, it'll brown up. But to do that process quicker, I just turn the broiler on. On high and let it brown for a couple minutes. And you have to watch it too. To make sure it doesn't burn. Because you don't want your whole layer of cheese to be black. That probably wouldn't taste good. So I'll be back when that's ready in five. It'll literally be like, it'll literally only take like maybe a minute or two. Peace. Alright, I'm back. Naturally they're done. I have let them cool for about a minute or two here on the stove. Last thing you'll need is some sour cream, which I have here. Great. Let's grab one. Let's see that one that looks good. Ooh, this one looks good. Oops. And try this. My nachos always come out amazing. Oh, I just love these squeezy sour cream bottles. This one, because you just squeeze and it comes out. You need to get a spoon to scoop some out. You just squeeze. And look, a little perfect amount of sour cream is on my, on my nacho. Let's take a bite, shall we? Mmm. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mmm. Chicken is so flavorful. Everything is so good. Because I, like I said, I chopped up chicken. I put it on the stove. Well, first I chopped it up, put it in the bowl, seasoned it really well. And then I put it on the stove, cook it, shred it. And bam. Oh my god. So good. The main thing you want your nachos to be very flavorful from like the meat or the meatless um, protein you have. So good. I love quick and easy to make. Especially if you're not in the mood to cook something big. Throw everything together. You cook the meat, whatever. And you put it on, on a tray with tortilla and cheese and your veggies. Mm -mm -mm. So good. Alright, let's bomb it there. Quick and easy. One meal all in one. One. It's not like you have to make the meat now, you need to have a side, but this is basically it, a meal right here. And this is also good for like parties or gatherings if you're inviting people over. Just make a whole tray of nachos. Plate it nice, obviously. Don't just leave it in the tray. I mean, you can, but if you want to put it somewhere nice and pretty, and then have like sour cream in a cup, some maybe salsa and some maybe guacamole, like different, you know, toppings on the side. Or you can do it where people build their own nachos and then you put it in the oven for them. This is so bomb. Mm. Alright, I'm gonna go eat some dinner and enjoy my nacho. So, I'm gonna go. Like, subscribe, comment, and ding the bell. And I hope you enjoyed this nacho recipe. Bye!